Hi, everyone. We'll be starting now, and I'll turn it over to Giselle. Thank you, Josh. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Giselle Dunia, and I am the Senior Advisor for Capacity Strengthening at the Demographic and Health Surveys, or DHS, program. I will be your facilitator today. We'll be introducing the Revised Service Provision Assessment, or SPA. I will be joined by other presenters throughout this event. Today, we are very excited to launch the Revised SPA. We would like to thank all the contributors that made this revision possible. Your focus and commitment are greatly appreciated. This is a public webinar, and we're aiming for over 400 people to join us today. So you will notice that we deactivated your microphone, your video, and the chat uh, to avoid any technical issues. However, you have the Q&A feature that you can find at the bottom of your screen to ask questions and make comments at any time throughout today's webinar. There will be a dedicated time to address questions toward the end. Uh, bonjour à tous. Je sais qu'il y a aussi des francophones dans la salle. Uh, malheureusement, nous, nous n'allons pas parler français aujourd'hui. Um, ce webinaire uh, sera totalement en anglais. Nous allons uh, vous, uh, faire un, un suivi avec vous pour partager avec vous les, uh, les, ce qu'on aura présenté aujourd'hui. Ça, c'est pour les francophones. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. So today's agenda, as you can see on your screen, um, we'll first hear, hear uh, welcoming remarks from the Demographic and Health Surveys Program and from USAID. Following these remarks, the DHS program will present the questionnaire development process and the DHS program's quality of care framework. Then we will see a presentation about the revised questionnaires and methodologies. After that, we will dive into what is new and exciting about the new uh, and the revised SPA. And then we will take a moment to address questions. Then we'll end our time together with a presentation of next step. First, I would like to introduce Dr. Sunita Kishore, who is the director of the DHS program. She will provide welcoming remarks. Dr. Kishore is a gender expert, demographer, and survey specialist with over 20 years of experience in the collection of high quality gender data in countries around the world. She has been responsible for the design, implementation, and analysis of questionnaire modules on women's empowerment and domestic violence in population-based surveys. Dr. Kishore has been the director of the DHS program for over 10 years. Dr. Kishore, welcome. Thank you, Giselle. Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to all who have joined us today. It is indeed a great pleasure to be here on behalf of the DHS program to introduce you to the revised Service Provision Assessment Survey instruments. Since 1984, the USAID-funded DHS program has provided technical assistance to more than 400 surveys in over 90 countries, advancing global understanding of health and population trends in countries around the world. The DHS program implements the demographic and health surveys, the malaria indicator surveys, and the Service Provision Assessment Surveys, or SPA. The SPA is a health facility assessment survey that over the years has provided a comprehensive overview of a country's health service delivery. In September 2020, the DHS program embarked on a collaborative process to revise the SPA instruments to better meet existing and emerging critical data needs particularly in the area of quality of care. With the key objective of also focusing on data that is immediately useful to countries for monitoring and improving health delivery, 
nine technical working groups worked in partnership as a community of practice to recommend quality of care indicators for USAID's priority health areas. Thereafter, the team at DHS have worked closely with USAID to synthesize and prioritize all recommendations and continue working on updating all SPA instruments and tools. The fruits of this labor are at hand, and today we are delighted to share with you the new SPA data collection instruments. You will see reflected in these instruments many of the prioritized recommendations from the SPA community of practice. The revised core SPA instruments are now ready and available for countries to use to collect nationally representative data on quality of care, service provision, service readiness, and service availability. These data will be part of the evidence base guiding decisions on programs and policies to improve health and well being. In closing, I would first like to thank USAID for their continued investment in the SPA and their unwavering commitment to high quality data collection designed to improve healthcare delivery around the world. I'm also extremely grateful to the more than 100 participants from 50 organizations who participated in the SPA revision. Your hard work and dedication have strengthened the SPA by ensuring that it is representative of the diverse data user community and is responsive to current and evolving healthcare data needs. And finally, I would like to not just thank, but also express my immense pride in the work done by the DHS program SPA team that included its leaders, a consultant, and many other DHS staff. The team's unwavering commitment, passion, and perseverance have ensured that the new SPA instruments meet all of the objectives of the revision while adhering to the principles of country ownership and data use. This dedication and commitment have brought us to this point today when we mark an immensely important milestone in the SPA revision process, the launch of the revised core instruments. These instruments are a testament to the team's hard work, to USAID support, and the great contributions of many, many experts and stakeholders. Thank you all. Giselle? Thank you, Dr. Kishore. Now I would like to introduce Kristen Wares. Uh, she is the contract officer representative or COR of the DHS program and works in the Office of Population and Reproductive Health in the Bureau of Global Health at USAID. She has worked at USAID for over 10 years, primarily working in the Office of HIV AIDS, focusing on monitoring, evaluation, data use, health information systems, and gender. She has her, her master's degree of public health from the Columbia University. Ms. Wares, welcome. Thank you so much, Giselle. At USAID, we are very excited for today's launch of the revised service provision assessment. I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. Some of you are familiar with the SPA, and for others, today might be your introduction to the service provision assessment. The SPA has long been a valuable tool which meets a need for monitoring health system strengthening in low and middle income countries. They collect information on the overall availability of different facility-based health services in a country, as well as the country's readiness to provide those services. The SPA questionnaires were last updated in 2012 in collaboration with international agencies to make them easier to use and also to include additional information. Our goal now in the current revision process was to increase survey utilization and produce a leaner instrument focused on quality of care across priority health areas. 
We are proud to be here today, virtually, to share the revised SPA as we continue towards our ultimate goal of improved information on health care for decision making. The one and a half hour webinar today will provide an overview of the SPA revision process and the DHS program's quality of care framework. We'll learn about the revised SPA methodology and questionnaires, as well as what's new and exciting in the revised SPA, followed by a brief Q&A discussion. I want to acknowledge and thank the efforts of my colleagues of the DHS program and within the USA Bureau of Global Health for all the work that has gotten us here today. We are very excited that through the assistance of the DHS program and the inputs of stakeholders like many of you attending this webinar, we now have an updated SPA, better able to meet the needs of the global health field. Many thanks for your collaboration and assistance. Thank you so much, Kristen Wears, for those welcoming remarks. With that, we will now provide an overview of the questionnaire development process and the DHS program's quality of care framework. This presentation will be made by Dr. Sarah Rees, who is a senior researcher at the DHS program. If you do have questions during today's webinar, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and we'll address them later. Thank you, Giselle, and welcome everybody. I'm really thrilled to be here with you all to talk about the revised SPA. So I know many of you do not want to wait to see all of the revisions to the SPA. We have a lot to talk about, including new questionnaires, new content, and new approaches. This slide provides a sneak peek into some of the things you can look forward to hearing about. But just in case we have any folks listening in who are new to the SPA survey, the Service Provision Assessment is a holistic assessment of quality of care at a health facility. It is holistic in that it assesses the quality of care from multiple perspectives by looking at the infrastructure, the human resources, as well as the clinical interactions through both observation and from the client's perspective. Only by looking at facilities in this comprehensive way can we begin to really understand quality of care. Service provision assessments are typically a sample of health, health facilities within a country. Though there have been cases where they have been a census where all health facilities in a country are included. Health facilities of all types are included in the spa from tertiary hospitals all the way down to health posts. Additionally, the SPA includes facilities of all managing authorities. This can be government, private companies, faith-based organizations, or NGOs. The different categories of facility types and managing authorities, of course, vary by country. As you will hear more about later, the SPA assesses a variety of health service areas with a particular focus on maternal and child health and family planning. So why did we need a SPA revision? Well, first, the last SPA revision was completed in 2011, 2012, so it was time for a refresh. And second, an evaluation conducted at the midpoint of DHS-7, as well as a country engagement survey conducted in December of 2020, identified some important barriers to SPA uptake that we wanted to address. So the SPA revision had three equally important objectives. First was to revise the questionnaires to clearly and expressly measure quality of care using a specific set of indicators. Second was to engage key stakeholders in the process of identifying the data gaps and selecting the quality of care indicators to be measured by the SPA. So I want to pause here and acknowledge and thank all of the members of the SPA community of practice who contributed blood, sweat, and tears to this process. I know that many of you listening were likely members of one of the many technical working groups that provided recommendations for methodologies, for quality of care indicators, and this SPA revision would not have been possible without your time and effort, so thank you. The third objective is to increase demand for and use of the SPA data 
through the development of new resources and new data use tools. While we have been planning for and discussing this objective three since the beginning of the SPA revision process, today is really the start of the activities focused on objective three, working towards the release of the new resources and accompanying data use tools. The first of those resources to, to be released are the questionnaires themselves, which we are launching today. As I touched on earlier, the technical working groups made up of global and in-country technical experts and other stakeholders provided methodological and indicator recommendations through a consultative process. These recommendations and indicators taken together were really the drivers for the development of the guiding principles of the SPA revision process, which to help us at the DHS program in collaboration with USAID decide what methodologies to use, which data elements to focus on, and what kinds of questionnaires to use in the new SPA. They also drove the questionnaire design process. Once we were able to dive into the questionnaire design process, we when we were able to dive into the questionnaire design process, we started with the indicators. So the majority of questions in the new SPA can be mapped directly to an indicator. So you can see here on the screen an example of how we get from an indicator to a question to a question in a questionnaire. So from the indicator, you know, percentage of sick children under age five who were checked for danger signs, we can we move to the sick child observation and the questions which detail the specific danger signs that we are interested in. However, there are some additional questions that are not linked specifically to indicators. Now, some of these are necessary for basic survey parameters, such as filter questions. So this example is from the healthcare worker interview and shows that you know, before we ask questions about in-service training and mentorship for malaria, we need to first ask if the healthcare worker um, actually diagnoses or treats malaria clients as part of their work. Now, other questions are included for future data disaggregation, such as healthcare worker and client characteristics. So this example is from the antenatal care, family planning, and postnatal exit interview, and shows that we are now asking about marital status of clients from these services. Now, finally, there are some questions that touch on certain emerging topics, either requested by USAID or thought to be priority from the DHS program. An example here is a question on COVID vaccination from the antenatal care exit interview. A lot of time and energy went into the considerations of what to ask and how to ask it. After months of work, the final questionnaires were submitted to USAID in December 2021 and went through multiple rounds of revisions with the USAID management team in order to finalize the content. And the final questionnaires reflect each aspect of the DHS program's quality of care framework, which is shown here. Now, this framework represents the definition of quality of care as we wanted it to be captured by the SPA. It is based on a Don Abadian definition of quality of care and reflects similar frameworks from WHO, the QED network, and others. Different sections of questionnaires can be mapped back to this framework, indicating that indeed the revised SPA is a truly holistic measure of quality of care in the focal areas of antenatal care, family planning, sick child care, and maternity care. Well, I'm sure you were eager to hear more about the questionnaires themselves, so I'm going to turn it over to Gulnara Semenov, Senior Health Advisor at the DHS program, to provide more detail. And as a reminder, if you have questions about anything that is mentioned during the presentation, please put your question in the Q&A box. Gulnara, over to you. Thank you, Sara. Now uh, that we've heard about the SPA revision process, Let's look at the new SPA questionnaires. But first, a question on these questionnaires. Can you guess how many standard questionnaires does the revised SPA propose?
Okay, I can see that uh, about 40% said 10. That's right. The correct answer is 10 questionnaires. Let's explore them. As Sarah mentioned, we received an impressive volume of change requests. So we had to prioritize this request to avoid uh, overburdening the survey questionnaires. In fact, heavy and long tools may negatively impact both data quality and survey cost. We simply couldn't include everything. In addition, not every question is a good candidate for a national level survey. For example, some questions are better suited for collection via HMIS or qualitative approaches. We must also keep in mind that sample size requirements for some indicator may exceed our standard sample sizes, especially at subnational level. After research and consideration across multiple program areas and under leadership of USAID, the DHS program service provision assessment will use five types of questionnaires. Inventory, health workers interview, observation of family planning client, antenatal care client, and sick child consultations. Then we use client exit interviews for family planning client, antenatal care client, sick children caretaker, and postpartum women. The newborn resuscitation simulation questionnaire. That brings us to a total of 10 individual questionnaires, including simulation, a new type of SPA questionnaire developed to measure eligible uh, health provider skills on neonatal resuscitation, and new exit interview for postpartum women. Total 10 questionnaires. Now let's see if you can guess this one. The overall number of questions in the revised SPA Questionnaires compared to the old questionnaire. Has it increased, decreased, or is about the same? Please use your poll on your screen. You have 30 seconds. Okay, about a quarter of participants uh, uh, said it has decreased. The number of uh, questions has actually decreased. In fact, the new SPA questionnaire consists of over 1,600 questions compared with over 2,100 in the old SPA, representing over 20% of reduction overall. Even with the two new tools, questions in the revised SPA have been reduced overall by over 20%, mostly thanks to the reduced inventory questions. This was a strategic by tough trade-off. A large reduction of the family planning observation is because of change from the method-specific clinical focus to cross-method focus on informed method choice. The increased number of sick child care observation is due to collecting more data on children's condition, including test and assessment results. This will provide in-depth and programmatically important information on the provision of care by providers. These changes follow the main objectives of the SPA revision, pivot to measure more quality process of care without increasing implementation cost. However, the implementing time in each facility expects it to be the same. That is, we do not expect the time will be reduced because of the two new tools as well as potentially increased sample of clients for observation exit interview. The sampling approach for providers and clients to maximize the number of priority clients observed are in the process of finalization, and my colleague Hamdi Musa will be presenting that soon. Among 1,639 questions in the 10 questionnaires, 655 are new. 
which corresponds to roughly 40% of the new questions that are new or updated. Overall, the relative focus on experience and provision of care has increased greatly. As you can see, oscillating between 40 to 50% of new questions in antenatal care observation and exit questionnaires, to over 65% of new questions in the observation family planning and sick child observation questions, and 70% in the family planning client exit interview. Also new uh, are changes to the structure and format of the questionnaires to better match the copy system. We are um, shifting the inventory readiness to more content on the process of care, adding new questions as necessary. We also made the questionnaire shorter with a clear focus on the experience and provision of care. In summary, the new SPI instrument has 10 questionnaires and two of them are new, postpartum client exit interview and newborn resuscitation simulation. If you do have questions, make sure to type them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. I will now hand over to Hamdi, Hamdi Musa, uh, International Health Lead at the DHS program, to talk about the revised sample SPA methodology. Thank you. Thanks, Gulnara. First, may I ask colleagues who are raising their hands to use the uh, Q&A box to make comments or ask questions because the mic is inactivated. Thanks. As you hear from the previous presentations, the revised SPA will continue to collect data at three levels. At the facility level, at health provider level, and at client level. Let's look at the sampling methodology to select health facilities, health providers, and the clients. Unlike household surveys, like the demographic and health survey, SPA data are collected from a representative sample of health facilities managed by government, private, and non-government nonprofit agencies. Information is presented at the national level by facility type, hospitals, health centers, health hosts, by managing authority, government or non-government, for all facilities assessed, and at subnational level for all facilities assessed. A health service provider is defined as one who provides consultation services, counseling, or laboratory services to clients. Interviewed providers are selected from those who are at the facility on the day of the survey and provided services that are assessed by the SPA. In facilities with less than eight providers, all providers are interviewed. In facilities with more than eight providers, all providers whose consultation were observed and who responded to facility inventory are interviewed. In each facility, for each of the priority services, antenatal care, family planning, and sick children, for which services are being provided on the day of the visit, all providers who provide the service and present in the facility during the SPA team visit are listed using the staff listing form. The staff listing form includes all providers associated to a selected healthy facility who are actually present on the day of the survey. And this is used as a sample frame for selection of providers for health provider interview. We propose to modify the health provider interview sampling method and nest the newborn resuscitation simulation sample within the health provider interview sample to achieve high quality implementation of the newborn resuscitation sample in each facility and to leverage health provider interview data without expanding the sample size for health provider interview. For observations and exit interviews, clients are systematically selected for observation based on the number of clients at each service site on the day of the visit. In the current SPA, we select a maximum of five clients per provider for each of the three key service areas. That brings us to a maximum of 15 clients for each service per facility. 
exit interviews are attempted with all observed clients and caretakers of sick children before they leave the facility. In the revised SPA, we are improving data collection on provider-client interaction. Hence, for observation, we will select up to three providers per service area, antenatal care, sick children, and family planning. If there are more than three providers of any of the priority services, three providers for each service are randomly selected for observation. If there are three or fewer providers of any of the priority services, we will observe all of those providers. For each selected provider, all clients visiting the facility and waiting to see the provider are listed and all of them are observed. For each selected provider, priority or rare eligible clients was shown down with the black icons are listed separately. Those clients are the sick young infant under two months of age and first visit ANC clients and new family planning clients. For each selected provider, we will select all priority or rare eligible clients. These clients should be prioritized because they are rare. And we have several indicators that are specific to these specific groups. Non-priority clients are those not in these groups. We will select up to eight non-priority clients for each provider. If the number of listed clients per provider is over eight clients, only eight clients are randomly selected and observed. All observed clients and caretakers of sick children are eligible for exit interviews before they leave the facility. Let's look at this poll. What do you think is the maximum expected number of exit interviews for all service areas in the revised spot? I see about, yeah, 14% say it's 80, selected 80. Let's review that. In each facility, for each of the priority services, family planning, antenatal care, and sick children, for which services are being provided on the day of the visit, all providers who provide the service and the are present in the facility during the spa team visit are listed. If there are more than three providers of any of the priority services, three providers for each service are randomly selected for observation. If there are three or fewer providers of any of the priority services, all of them are selected. For each selected provider, all clients visiting the facility are waiting to see the provider are listed and all of them are observed. In the revised SPA, we will conduct exit interview for women after delivery. We are aiming for a maximum of eight interviews. We also plan to select three providers for the newborn resuscitation simulation. All in all, the maximum number of expected providers to be observed remains almost the same. However, we are greatly increasing the number of observations from 45 to 72, and the number of exit interviews from 45 to 80. Another new approach that we will implement relates to timestamps. We will be collecting more accurate timestamps about activities in the facility. And this will help in tracking the team performance and calculate better survey weights. For example, 
the number of working days for the outpatient department, the working hours of the outpatient department, opening at time and closing time, the time spent at the facility, the team arrival time and departure time for each day, the time spent in listing and observing clients, the starting and ending time of listing and observing providers and the clients interactions. We are also improving our training methodology by including approaches that will improve data collection quality. One approach I would like to highlight is the Inter-Rater Reliability or IRR. We use this, this approach in the 2021 Nepal SPA training. The IRR aims at standardizing observation skills among observers, which will be critical while collecting data at the facility level, giving all the new content added. During the training, we will examine the agreement with the gold standard observer. As a reminder that if you have questions, please submit them using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Sarah Rees is now going to give us a summary of what's new and exciting in the revised SPA. Thanks, Hamdi. So I'm excited to give you a small taste of that new and exciting content that Gulnara and Hamdi were talking about. On the face of it, it may appear that much of the SPA is unchanged, given that many of the questionnaires, questionnaires remain the same with the addition of the postnatal exit interview and the newborn resuscitation simulation. However, as Gulnara described, within those questionnaires, most of the content is new. For most questionnaires, over half of the questions are new. So I'm going to walk us through some of the specific new content. It's worth reiterating that the SPA revisions reoriented the focus of the survey. Past SPAs had focused primarily on service readiness, you know, including extensive measurement on inputs to care, measuring the same inputs in different service areas. However, research has shown that availability of these inputs at a facility does not necessarily translate to better process quality of care. So in the revisions to the SPA, we took the opportunity to streamline the inventory to only focus on those inputs that are really essential. In addition, the client exit interview in past SPAs asked a series of questions about patient satisfaction, which showed <clears throat> overwhelmingly satisfied patients in nearly every survey. That is to say, they weren't providing very useful information. So in the revisions to the SPA, we shifted focus to specifically improve the assessment of the process quality of care, both technical and experiential, while reducing the focus on, these structural, on the structural quality. So we'll go over many of these changes in the next few slides. So the revised SPA has a new focus on person-centered experience of care measures. So if you recall the quality of care framework from earlier, Experience of care is an important aspect of process quality of care that we are seeking to assess. In recent years, there has been emerging research on the importance of person-centered care. We're understanding more about how to measure how clients are treated at facilities and how the experience of care is associated with future health service utilization. So we are very excited to be able to include validated person-centered experience of care measures in the new SPA. So you can he see here on the slide, the first few questions from the eight item person-centered antenatal care scale, as well as uh, the first few questions from the person-centered maternity care scale here. So this maternity care scale has been validated in multiple settings and has been shown to be highly correlated with patient satisfaction and willingness to deliver again at the same facility. The family planning and sick child exit interviews also include expanded experience of care measures. In addition to items focusing on experience of care for a specific type of clinical visit, like antenatal care, family planning, maternity care, 
there are also a subset of more general experience of care questions included across all exit interviews. All exit interviews will also include questions on physical and verbal abuse by a healthcare provider. Now we also have additional client characteristics in the exit interviews. So we know that client characteristics are essential for examining differentials in quality of care and were one of the things often requested by data users. The new client characteristics questions are slightly different across the exit interviews. Um, so for example, this marital status question um, appears in the antenatal care, uh, family planning and postnatal care exit interviews, but not the sick child caretaker exit interview since we don't know who the caretaker is who brought the child in. Other new client characteristics are include uh, parity, as well as whether a provider classifies a woman's pregnancy as high risk um, and the number of antenatal care visits ever received for the current pregnancy, um, not only those at the facility being assessed. So one of the most exciting things about the new SPA are the updated clinical observations. So one of the guiding principles of the new SPA was to focus on actionable monitoring indicators on provider performance. So there have been many advances in quality of clinical care measurement over the past 10 years. So we were very eager to update this content. For some illustrative, illustrative examples, you can see here that in the antenatal care observation, we've updated questions like whether a woman's blood pressure was taken in the correct position with her arm at heart level or with her arm above or below heart level. The family planning observation now includes a discussed column uh, for each method to assess whether a woman and her healthcare provider discussed the method at all during the consultation. Previous observations only noted whether a method was prescribed or provided to the client at the health facility. So this addition provides valuable new information. The sick child observation now allows you to follow the treatment progression of children with suspected malaria. Their temperature reading, whether they receive testing, either a, rapid, a malaria rapid test or microscopy, what their test result was, and whether they received appropriate treatment based on their test results. Now on the nutrition side, there are now multiple micronutrient supplement and calcium supplement sections in the antenatal care observations, which can be included if countries have a policy of providing these supplements during pregnancy. Now as my last example, the breastfeeding counseling section of the antenatal care observation has been expanded to capture more messages from the provider to the client during antenatal care. So in addition to many additional questions on specific types of training and mentorship, the healthcare worker interview now includes questions on perceptions of gender inequality in the workplace, as well as timely receipt of salary, which we've learned is a challenge to health provider job satisfaction. In addition, we also include questions on verbal and physical abuse of healthcare providers by other staff members and by patients or patient family members. Now, Gulnara showed how significantly the facility inventory has been streamlined from the previous version of the SPA. And while we did streamline, we were also able to add questions on emerging topics of importance. And I will highlight just a few examples here. So the first example is gender-based violence. The new SPA inventory contains a section on availability and structural quality of GBV services at facilities. Second example is of breast and cervical cancer. The new SPA includes questions on availability of services and diagnostics and whether staff have been trained in those areas. The final example is in the area of WASH. There has been emerging discussions around the importance of access to safe, private, and adequate toilets for clients and health providers. 
and the facility inventory now includes many detailed questions about toilets, which will assess the existence of menstrual hygiene supportive toilets and more. And this is only a partial snapshot of the list of questions about toilets at health facilities. So have you, as you have been hearing, we've added many new topics in the revised spa. There really is something in the spa for everyone. The brand new topics include you know, reproductive cancers, post-abortion care, gender-based violence, uh, emergency preparedness, as well as neglected tropical diseases. Now, some other topics have been updated with new and improved content, some of which I have already described. Now, as this slide shows, you know, most topics are covered primarily in the facility inventory and the health worker interview. That is to say, the spa assesses only structural quality for many topics. The spa cannot assess every topic in depth. However, the spa maintains its focus on maternal and child health and family planning in this revision. So you can see for the topics on the top right, antenatal care, delivery and newborn care, sick child care and family planning, the observation and client exit interview questionnaires allow us to go deeper to understand the process quality of care. There are also some topics on the bottom right which are integrated throughout the observation and exit interviews. Earlier, I showed some of the updated nutrition content from the antenatal care observation, but we can also find new content in the sick child observation and exit interview the postpartum exit interview, the health worker interview, and the inventory. Malaria is also a large part of the sick child observation, as I discussed earlier. But there are also questions in the antenatal care observation. Non-communicable diseases are integrated into the inventory, health worker interview, and the ANC observation primarily. In addition to the new content and new topics, there are also multiple new approaches being used in the spa. Hamdi described the updated client sampling approach to maximize priority client participation. We are also collecting data on client load in specific clinical areas. So we know that there is increasing interest in calculating effective coverage estimates using spa data. Now, while one of the guiding principles of the spa redesign was to avoid collecting data that was already a part of the HMIS or other health facility records, this client load information will allow for improved effective coverage calculations. Additionally, these new approaches allow for us to update and improve the sampling weights provided in the data sets to be used in calculating estimates and in further analysis. Now, when developing our guiding principles, we sought to balance accuracy, cost, and implementation practicality. So this meant that as much as possible, we endeavored to collect directly observed performance data. However, there are cases where events are rare, but the impact of provider skill during those events is essential to contribute to improved outcomes. And one of these cases is newborn resuscitation for birth asphyxia. Now in this case, inclusion of simulation as a data collection approach was warranted given the key role these skills play in reducing neonatal mortality. Therefore, one of the new approaches we're including in the revised SPA is newborn resuscitation simulation for providers. Finally, We've mapped the content of those questionnaires back to the SPA quality of care framework. Here you can see where the different sections fit into the framework. As I discussed in the opening to this webinar, one of the objectives of this re revision was to expressly address quality of care. And I hope that this visual shows how much we really endeavored to do just that. So I hope this webinar has been helpful so far to understand the new and revised SPA, what we were aiming for, how we got here, 
and what is included in the revisions. We are very excited and proud to be able to release the new questionnaires today and look forward to providing you with even more resources on the spa in the near, near future. So you can visit the DHS website now to go and look at each questionnaire in detail. Now I'll turn it back over to Giselle to moderate the Q&A portion of our session. Thank you so much, Sarah. We are now going to address questions submitted through the Q&A feature. If you do have additional questions, you can post them um, at the bottom of your screen. You have a Q&A. Please post them there, and we'll be uh, we'll make our uh, we do our best to address them. So let's uh, look at questions that have already been submitted. Um, so we have a question on metadata for electronic data collection using common mobile mobile data collection methods. So Gulnara, do you want to address that question? Sure. Um, uh, thank you for the question, um, Direb. Um, we uh, usually uh, for copy we. Uh, uh, use data collection on the computer assessment uh, uh, personal interview using um, tablet computers. And we also developed this uh, um, data capture uh, program. So right now uh, we don't uh, plan to use any uh, applications for direct uh, data collection in um, uh, DHIS or ODK. But uh, who knows about the future? Right now, the first step is actually to develop the data capture using the um, uh, tablet computers. However, the, um, the, our questionnaires are on public domain. If anybody wants to actually adapt it for um, um, data use uh, using other um, um, media, I think it's possible. Thank you, Gulnara. Um, the next question we have um, is about the inventory questionnaire. Uh, where they, were there are specific types of health areas of the inventory that were reduced? So I'm going to call uh, YJ Choi, our consultant, to address this question. Thank you, Giselle. Um, yes, one size did not fit all. Um, so for health areas and programs that have other major data sources, such as HIV, AIDS, and TB, the inventory has been reduced relatively more than in other programs. At the same time, um, some areas, such as NCDs, the total number of questions remained relatively similar, because SPA is often a major data source for NCDs at the country level. Thank you. Thank you, YJ. Uh, the next question we have um, is about PNC exit interviews. And we do have two questions um, about PNC exit interviews. How are you selecting clients? And the next question is, will it be feasible to obtain eight PNC exit interviews at facilities with low, with low delivery low, uh, case loads? I'm going to call on um, Hamdi to address these questions. Hamdi. Yeah, thank you, Giselle, and thank you for uh, posting this question. Yeah, for the uh, PNC, we have an experience in Nepal collecting the, uh, the, uh, the PNC exit interview. Uh, in 2015, we were able to interview about 50% uh, of the uh, postpartum. So we selected the uh, a maximum uh, of uh, five postpartum that was in Nepal 2015, uh, who were discharged on the day of the visit. Then we selected those for the postpartum interviews. And in 2021, Nepal uh, SPA. Uh, we were observing normal delivery and we were also um, collecting data on postpartum uh, exit interview. We were able to select up to 60% of uh, postpartum women. Uh, so we are aiming to, to increase the ceiling up to eight, but uh, this is the maximum number. Uh, definitely, you know, we have a facility with high, uh, you know, level uh, or, or, or offering delivery service so we can get uh, 
um, large number of clients there and we, we know the lower level facilities or the facility that doesn't offer normal delivery cases, we hardly can find a case in, in, in those facilities. Yeah, but eight is the maximum, but this doesn't mean that we will have eight from each and every uh, facility. Uh, yeah, that's, I, I hope uh, I, I addressed your question. Thanks. Giselle. Thank you so much, um, Hamdi. Uh, YJ, do you want to complete that response or is that okay? Oh, I don't have anything else to add. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question we have is, um, how have we addressed experience of care questions to reduce social disability biases? Um, Sarah, do you want to address that one? Sure. So, you know, I think, you know, we can say that, you know, social desirability bias is impossible to completely get rid of, you know, but the new experience of care questions, um, you know, really focus on specific aspects of person-centered care and whether or not clients received those. So I think, you know, they aren't asking generally, are you, were you satisfied with care? Um, and, you know, these more specific questions about, you know, specific aspects of, you know, did they, um, you know, receive care that was provided in a certain way have been, you know, are recommended to reduce social deliver desirability bias, um, you know, and have also kind of been validated in multiple settings. And so I think as much as we can, we, you know, through the questions, um, you know, we've tried to reduce social de desirability bias. I mean, in addition, in the survey implementation, you know, we aim to conduct the interview, you know, in a location where the client is going to feel comfortable, you know, away, you know, a bit away from the facility so they don't feel like their answers, you know, can be heard by the, the health providers. Um, so, you know, we've done, I think, um, you know, we, we aim to reduce it as much as we can, um, although we know that it's not possible to reduce completely. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, the next question um, is, is asking whether the slide deck will be available for reference later. So we will be sharing uh, the recording for this session um, with an evaluation link. So uh, you will have that available. Thank you. And the next question is, um, is it possible to get information about the timing of content of ANC for SPA? So Sarah. <laughs> sure. So yeah, so we will know, I'm not sure exactly what aspect of timing or what timing um, you're asking about, but we will know, you know, the gestational age of the pregnant woman um, at her visit, as well as, you know, the number of um, her antenatal visit. So whether it was her first visit or, you know, a subsequent visit. So we will know, you know, at, at that visit, we will know, you know, that information about the woman and then what content of care she received. So we won't, you know, we're not asking about things that she might've received at a different visit, but we will know at that specific visit, we can relate that to timing her gestational age, as well as, you know, what number of visits she is on. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Um, our next question is, um, is about respectful care for newborn and children, client and caregiver, as well as female patients. I think I missed this one, so I'm going to get back to this one. Um, but there is a question about newborn resuscitation simulation observation. Uh, someone asked if we can expand a little more about that. So Gunnar, do you want to address that question? Sure. Thank you so much for this question. This is very new for us as well. Kind of uh, um, in our questionnaire, we have something old, something new, something red, as Italian said. So um, this uh, newborn resuscitation simulation is absolutely new for us, both as a method and uh, um, as a tool. So it's uh, adapted from the uh, Helping Baby Breathe uh, Objective Structural Clinical Examination Tool. And uh, uh, 
it basically um, assesses uh, some kind of scenario that you give uh, uh, that uh, uh, right now the baby of such and such was born with uh, uh, cannot breathe or started breathing, etc. So we're using this uh, methodology uh, and uh, uh, we plan to uh, provide the, the um, teams with uh, um, either mannequin or um, adults. And uh, basically we will guide the provider uh, how to um, address specific problems and then we will score the, um, the results. Uh, all uh, health providers who um, uh, are involved in service delivery for um, labor and delivery in uh, newborn care, they will be eligible for this uh, um, uh, simulation. And uh, uh, we will also um, give them a time to adjust to play with this doll before then uh, could be assessed. And then uh, basically, um, uh, approximately 80% uh, score will be for passing. However, as uh, with all um, uh, other uh, instruments, we do not uh, uh, provide feedback to the providers uh, because it uh, uh, will um, deter them from participation and it's not uh, an objective for, uh, for the SPA. We will just collect information and then we will tabulate it in the, um, in the final report. I hope that I answered your question. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Gulnara. The next question we have um, is for Hamdi. Um, how can one become a data collector for the DHS program? Yeah, data collector. Yeah, data collector for the SPA or DHS. I can add the SPA data collectors. Sure. So yeah, for the SPA. Yeah, we use a medical background uh, interviewers. So if someone is a medical doctor, a nurse, nurse midwife, or a public health background can be um, a SPA um, um, data collector or interviewer. Uh, so we, we all, all the SPA team are uh, medical background uh, interviewers. And we train them, uh, you know, for the, we, we require them to have some experience, you know, at, at, at health facilities, uh, some information about the service provided. And we train them on all the uh, questionnaires and the CAPI programming, and we produce, um, you know, field visits. Uh, yes, so all medical background um, personnel are welcome to be a SPA interviewer or data collector. Thanks. Thank you, Hamdi. Just to add that it's, it is not the DHS program that decides, but we work with um, the country implementing agency, the Ministry of Health to decide uh, who are going to be involved in the survey. It's, it's the country's survey and we are only supporting them. Thanks, Hamdi. Uh, the next question is for Sarah. Do you include questions about respectful care for newborn and children clients and caregivers, as well as female patients? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, so the in the postnatal uh, exit interview, it the the validated scale that we use was is is primarily focused at on the woman so on you know her experiences um, during delivery and so we don't have questions specifically about newborns in the postnatal exit interview um, but that's an interesting area for potential future expansion however for the children um, you know so while there was no validated scale for person centered kind of sick child care available at the time that we were developing these tools we did take uh, relevant questions from the person centered scales for antenatal care and maternity care and included a set of questions um, in the sick child exit interview so anything that we felt like could be relevant for in the sick child context. Um, so some examples, you know, include, um, you know, you know, thinking about your, your, your visit with your child today, did you feel that the doctors, nurses, and other staff treated you and your child with respect? Um, 
you know, did you feel that you could discuss your problems with um, with the health staff? So there's a set of questions that we feel like kind of really captures that, uh, you know, respectful care and experience of care that would be relevant for the sick child context. So um, there, there is a set of questions there and, you know, we um, look forward to, to feedback on those. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, our next question is uh, relates to methodology guidance, and I see another question about the sampling guidance. When will that be available? So I'm going to ask Gunara to address these questions. Gunara, do you want to address the questions about when the methodology and sampling guidance will be available? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, so in, uh, um, for year four, which ends in October, we uh, aim to release new tools as we uh, discussed during the webinar. And uh, a sampling manual is one of those tools. So we hope that by October, we will have uh, the sampling manual available. In terms of the new uh, methodology that uh, Hamdi described, <clears throat> it requires additional uh, work by our sampling uh, uh, specialist team. If it's uh, uh, available at that time, it will be included to the uh, sampling manual, but it will be definitely included to the um, interviewer's guidelines. So by the time that uh, the first survey will be implemented, it will be uh, available. We also, um, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much all. Thanks, Gunara. Um, so I see from the question that uh, apparently it's an anonymous at attendee, but they say they are planning a survey now and would love to include these methods and tools. So. Uh, if you are planning a survey now, we're going to share an email address where we can uh, communicate and design that survey with you. So, um, and and we do have, it's not just in a format of a guidance written and, and uh, collated, but we can work with you to make this happen. So thank you for that question. Um, so the next question is, um, how many SPA surveys are planned to be funded in the near term? Uh, and I'm going to call again on, on Gunara and maybe Sunita if she wants to add something to what Gunara would say. Thank you. So um, there are uh, no really uh, uh, SPA surveys in the pipeline uh, for sure, but uh, uh, it's kind of uh, um, uh, ongoing process, we have uh, a couple of countries that are interested, but so far it's just in the negotiation process, very beginning. But uh, um, it's uh, it's an open uh, door. Thank you. Sunita? Yeah, nothing much to add except to say that we, uh, you know, we do not determine which countries are going to have a survey. It is countries that determine whether they're going to have a survey. And so we will, we, you know, we are obviously uh, hopeful that many more countries with these new tools um, and all of the data that they would get out if they actually have a SPA, that they would be interested in funding, in, in promoting and funding the, a new SPA. So um, we look forward to interest being expressed by different missions as well as ministries of health uh, of countries and we are here to help them implement the SPA. Thank you, Sunita. Uh, so someone asked whether the tools will be available in French. So today the questionnaires are available in English, but we'll work on translations that um, we'll talk about next steps in just a few minutes. So uh, one of the next steps is to um, translate all the tools to, uh, into French. Uh, the next question is, will there be guidance on how to train and standardize clinical observers? And I'm going to call on Hamdi to address this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we had a plan to, to standardize the, uh, the clinical observer uh, and to apply the, uh, the interrater reliability technique. So for this one, we will produce some videos for the consultation 
and we will use these videos uh, during training and we will have a gold standard observer and we will compare the performance of the interviewers or observers uh, related to this uh, standard uh, gold, uh, the gold standard observer. So we will see the agreement if it is uh, below 80 or 90%, we will provide more training till we got a good observer with the agreement up to 90%. There is some differences among observers, uh, you know, but we will not uh, if, 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 some, if, if some of the observers are below this agreement, we will provide more training until we get the target of uh, about 90% agreement with the gold standard. We apply this uh, at a few trainings like the Nepal Spa, but we will have a more structural and we will have materials and guidelines for this uh, integrator reliability. Uh, training. This this is our approach to standardize the, the training of observers. Over. Thank you, Hamdi. Uh, someone asked whether the today's recording will be shared. Yes, it will be shared after the after the webinar. Thank you. And there is a question about um, how do you see the survey being used towards PHC measurement. And I'm going to call on uh, Gunara to address this. Well, we uh, uh, we will have uh, lots of uh, uh, indicators. Um, we we really have like a list of working indicators uh, because we are building questions uh, based on the indicators. And uh, uh, there are some uh, questions on readiness and uh, availability of uh, uh, um, medicines and. Uh, um, services and uh, training uh, you know staff etc so it will be addressed uh, across the report uh, but it also will be addressed in the um, uh, way how it will support our um, new focus on uh, um, uh, more process and uh, experience of care but uh, some questions on the, uh, on phc will be of course uh, provided i don't know if i answered the questions sarah do you have anything to add um, no, I mean, just to add that, I mean, we did have, we do have specific indicators on, you know, primary health care that we received from that uh, technical working group, and they will, you know, be able to be measured with the, the content of the new SPA. Um, and so we, we think that, you know, those are going to be very useful kind of monitoring indicators for our PHC. Thank you, Gulnara. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Also, some of the indicators that San, Sarah suggested uh, uh, discussed, uh, for example, for exit interview, they have been standardized. So we will be able to do some kind of uh, cross-service uh, um, uh, indicators, uh, basically presenting um, from uh, um, uh, client perspective, for example, as well. Thank you. Uh, so there is a question about um, interviews with postpartum women. Uh, do these interviews include questions about family planning? Sarah? Uh, yes, so they include questions about whether women received uh, counseling on family planning um, in the postpartum period, like, um, you know, after they delivered, but before they've been discharged. So, yes. Yeah. Thank you. A question for Hamdi, you mentioned in the Nepal spa normal delivery, you mentioned that the Nepal spa normal delivery was observed. Are there tools and guidance for this? Hamdi? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we observed normal delivery in the 2021 Nepal uh, spa. We use the MCAP uh, protocol for observation and it was adapted to the uh, Nepal uh, context. Uh, also, we, we have something exciting. We, we tabulate uh, data for normal delivery and postpartum exit uh, with the technical working group. So data and report will be released soon, uh, maybe uh, sometime next month in, in June, around mid-June. Uh, so we are preparing now the, the final report. So all the tools are, will be attached to the report and all the tabulation will be available uh, soon, I believe over thanks thank you 
Uh, YJ, uh, do you want to address this question? Are there questions that address disability and inclusion? Thank you. Um, yes, thanks to WASH TWG's recommendation, um, SPA will collect information about the availability of toilet that's accessible to people with limited mobility. So that information will feed into a composite measure on basic amenity that uh, TWG WASH group recommended. Um, however, SPA does not collect information about care that's related with um, disability. Thank you. Thanks, YJ. Uh, and there is a question about um, how will the, the SPA, the revised SPA interact with or complement other health facility data and assessment initiatives? Gunara? Th thank you so much. The whole revision of the um, SPA uh, was basically focused around uh, uh, better measure of quality of care and uh, moving from uh, uh, inventory and uh, uh, readiness to basically provision and experience of care. So this one thing. And uh, if you look at the um, countries, it's really up to them which instrument they want to use. We, uh, of course, would be very happy if they will choose uh, uh, SPA. And uh, uh, as we said that uh, uh, now it's a new uh, instrument, it was mostly driven by the uh, uh, closing gap. And uh, uh, we um, had lots of representatives from um, WHO and uh, uh, we uh, tried not to really replicate uh, the uh, health, uh, harmonized health uh, facility assessment, but somehow to complement it. And uh, it's up to the country to decide which one they want to use. And uh, um, we will be um, available to provide any assistance. In the future, if necessary, we can, of course, uh, when we uh, collect more data, we can basically harmonize our uh, efforts. Thank you, Gulnara. Um, so we already addressed the question about what countries are coming uh, first. So I'm going, um, going to um, move to the next question. These changes are very welcome. I'm wondering if the, um, you have the standards of, or benchmarks for which we should be assessing quality measures against. Um, Sarah, do you want to take that question? <laughs> Well, I, yeah, so part of, you know, this whole process, part of the challenge was, you know, we don't really have, you know, specific definitions of quality of care indicators to start with. And so, you know, that was part of the impetus behind having these technical working groups to really help us, you know, figure out, well, what are going to be the, the key quality of care indicators that would kind of be most useful for countries um, as they're seeking to kind of improve quality of care in their facilities. So I think that, you know, we are not planning to have any specific standards or benchmarks that countries, you know, should be using to assess their quality measures. I think that's for each specific country to kind of, you know, figure out how they want to use the data. I mean, we are planning to have, you know, lots of resources to help, you know, tabulate the data, to kind of visualize kind of where, um, kind of the, the trends. So for example, if a country has done a spa, you know, more than once, they could use, you know, their own data from a previous spa to assess their quality measures. I think that would probably be the best plan. Um, but so we are not planning to have specific standards or benchmarks since, you know, I don't think, you know, we're in a position to establish those. So thank you. Thank you. And um, we're going to take one last question. Uh, this is for Gunara. What type of models or equipment is needed for newborn resuscitation simulation? Well, uh, thank you for this question. It's such a new um, endeavor for us as well. So we contacted uh, um, uh, some of the uh, providers who were very fluent with this methodology. And uh, basically, they suggested a couple of options. And uh, one of them is uh, Baby Natali. And uh, it comes uh, together with uh, respirator and all kind of uh, uh, other equipment. It's like a little doll uh, that was designed specifically for the baby breathe uh, uh, project, I believe. And it's uh, um, 
basically all these videos are widely available on the internet if you want to uh, have uh, uh, some idea about this if you want to have specifics you are welcome to send us a mail and we can answer to you thank you thank you so there are more questions that um have been submitted but um we're running out of time, so we can't address all the questions. However, we'll follow up with registered participants with our answers to your questions. Thank you so much for um, your questions and, and thank you for, um, for your attention. So let us close by um, reviewing our next steps. The revised questionnaires are here, um, so you can download them from the, our website. We'll follow up with an evaluation link and the link to where you can find the new SPA uh, questionnaires. So we are looking forward to implementing the new SPA in participating countries. If there are countries that are interested, please reach out to us and we'll be able to um, work with you on designing a spa that is tailored to your specific needs. You may be wondering how much it is going to cost you to implement such an exciting survey. And I would like to share with you some cost drivers so that you take note of that um, in case you're interested in implementing a survey. The spa budget varies widely depending on the scope of work with different implementation scenarios. Um, and the first cost driver is the sample size. Most countries draw a sample of health facilities, but we also have countries that are interested in a census of all health facilities. But in most cases, there is a census of hospitals and then a sample of other types of facilities. The sample size is an important driver of the overall cost because the bigger the, the, the sample, uh, the costier the, your survey will become. The number of teams that will be used for the survey is the second element. Given the number of tools that um, we have, we have 10 individual questionnaires, five types of questionnaires. We, uh, we think we will need a team of five interviewers at least and depending on the number of facilities to visit the, the number of these teams will vary and will, will overall um, affect the cost another cost driver is what questionnaires the country is interested in and how much adapt, how how they have adapted the questionnaires to the country needs for for example if a country add a lot of survey specific content. That means they'll have a longer questionnaire and that will affect the technical assistance that will be needed from the DHS program. They may also choose to use all the tools in all facilities or select some tools to use in some facilities. That of course will affect how long they, uh, the teams will stay in each facility and in the field and uh, consequently affect the cost. Another element to consider is that some countries have experience implementing SPA surveys and they have um, expertise for some components of the SPA survey. Um, and the, we have other countries that may need more handholding and thus extra technical assistance and extra trips from the DHS program to the country. And uh, that will affect the cost as well. It also depends wh whether we are working with a public or a private survey implementing agency. Private companies tend to have higher cost of implementation than uh, public uh, institutions. And finally, the cost of living in a country will affect the budget. For example, the per diem that we'll pay in a country like Uganda will be different in, in Ghana, and that will affect the overall cost. We also need to consider local policies in terms of stipends and other compensation 
for field workers and trainers. And um, all this may seem overwhelming for you, so we need to take into account all this. But if you are interested in conducting a SPA survey for your country, please reach out to us directly and we'll be able to share more details based on your specific needs. What comes next on our side? We will continue to design supporting tools and instruments. The CAPI program will be developed within the next few months. We will translate the revised questionnaires shortly, uh, primarily in French, but also for, um, in, uh, into other languages, depending on the need. The tabulation plans for both the key indicator reports and the final reports are under development. We'll have an updated capacity assessment tool for implementing agency, and the training materials will be ready to use in the next few months. We will also prepare the report template and the record file. Dissemination and data use tools will be developed such as um, data dashboards, a guide to SPA statistics, briefs, and more. We'll also explore new data collection methods. And finally, Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again to all our contributors. This slide is not big enough to list all of them. We look forward to implementing the new SPA surveys soon. If you do have questions, please uh, contact us via email at spa at dhsprogram.com. If you are interested in implementing a SPA survey, you can send us an email, send the email to the SPA coordinator, Gunara, and you can see her email on the screen. In any case, we'll follow up with an email with uh, this contact information so we can um, continue this conversation with specific countries. Thank you all. Thank you so much for joining us. That brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, you may leave the room at any time by clicking on the end button um, or just closing the window. Thank you so much. Thank you again so much. Uh, we'll be closing the room in just one more minute. 